We're going to go ahead and stick with the fantasy theme because it's time to talk about a game that fans have waited literal decades for, and the time has come. That's right. It's Hero Quest. So fans may have seen some teasers the last few days, but that was just an appetizer. Here to tell you all about the return of the mentor, the heroes, and the evil forces of Zargon is our Hero Quest team, Patrick, Brian, Doug, Steve Baker, and Joe Manganello. The quest is calling, so guys, time to answer the call. Heed well my words, for I am Mentor, guardian of Lord Tom. I come with great warnings. For decades, the shadows were gone. But just as darkness follows light, shadows have a way of returning. Many centuries ago, Zargon was my apprentice. He worked hard and learned quickly, but impatience devoured him. He desired to learn the ancient and dangerous secrets of dread magic. Once he learned these secrets, he fled. When I found him, he was greatly changed. He pledged his allegiance to the dread forces of evil, using magic as a shortcut to unlimited power. After a lengthy battle, he retreated to the northern dread wastes. There, he strengthened his forces, and once again, prepares for war. Zargon has returned, but light always follows darkness. And the four of you hold the key to saving the realm. The Barbarian, the mightiest of warriors. The Wizard, the wielder of arcane power. The Dwarf, resilient fighter and expert craftsman. The Elf, master of both the sword and magic. Your quest is to put an end to Zargon's reign of evil once and for all. The quest is calling. Is calling. Is calling. Hero Quest. The quest is calling. The moment you've all been waiting for. I am so excited to be here today to talk about Hero Quest, my favorite board game growing up as a kid. Uh, truly the dungeon crawler that started it all for many gamers today. And we're going to spend the next 30 or so minutes getting into all of the details behind the brand new Hero Quest HasLab campaign that is currently running over on HasbroPulse.com right now. Throughout our time together today, we're going to discuss this incredible relaunch in detail, as well as speak to the lead designer of the Hero Quest game system, the one, the only Stephen Baker, about his new quest book that will be available uh to any of the pledges uh and we're even going to take a few questions from all of you out there so uh you know post your questions but before we do all of that i want to introduce you to our panel uh first up we have the vp of design and development and overpowered barbarian brian wilk thanks Hello, joe brian. how's it going uh get uh, it's going great. Uh, we also have game designer and wandering monster, uh, Doug Hopkins. Hey, everyone. Hello, Doug. Yeah, there, there's a Doug card uh, in the treasure pile that you might pull out. He might pop up in a room. <laughs> uh, and, and finally, we have the brand manager and resident spell slinger, Patrick O'Rourke. Hello, Patrick. Thanks, Joe. And as Joe mentioned, we are launching HeroQuest right now on the Hasbro crowdfunding platform, HasLab. HasLab gives us the opportunity to make sure we bring back this classic right and to the level of craftsmanship we can all be proud of and excited about. And thanks to you, this project is already fully funded. In fact, we have already reached two stretch goals. Our first new playable hero, the Warlock, is now open for you to play. 
it's in its early stages and uh it this campaign funded so quickly we didn't expect to reveal it like this at PulseCon, but here it is uh also i just maybe an hour or so ago the extra dice were unlocked and i know extra dice compared to a warlock doesn't seem all that awesome but to me especially in the age of covid i'll take as many dice as i can get uh if you head over to HasLab right now, you'll see that we do have two tiers available for you to choose from to back this project. The Heroic tier at $99.99 and the Mythic tier at $149.99. The Heroic tier, which includes the game system itself and comes with 71 highly detailed character furniture miniature, character and furniture miniatures, plus you'll get four additional alternative hero sculpts. And finally, I know Joe is into this, Sir Ragnar gets his own figure. This version of the miniature will only be available during the HasLab campaign. There's also the Mythic tier, which is the $149.99 tier, and it includes everything that's in the Heroic tier, plus two expansions, Keller's Keep and Return of the Witch Lord. Additionally, there are two more special miniatures with Mentor and the Witch Lord himself. And soon to be announced, like on this panel, in like, I don't know, 10 to 20 minutes, some more special unlocks. All right, Joe, sorry, I just, I just had to get that out. Sort of the business of the day. I'm going to chill and, and go back to being a glass cannon. No, that's incredible. Um, you know, I grew up with the game, so hearing that Keller's Keep and Return of the Witch Lord, which were the two available expansion kits that were available in the United States, there were other ones that were available overseas, but the fact that those will be included in this uh, is, is really fun. And, yes, I, I don't know why I love Sir Ragnar so much. I really <laughs> – it was always weird that you had to take that weird, you know, the NPC miniature with the little ball above its head and, like, that's Sir Ragnar and then it's all of the NPCs. So I love that the NPCs are getting their own miniatures. Uh, this is fantastic. And you know what? I mean, you know, while we're on the subject, let's let's take a look at them. Um, you know, we're not going to have enough time today to show everything – uh, all of the miniatures, but we can give you a glimpse into what we're talking about with the new sculpts and miniatures. So let's take a look at this this new updated Hero Quest uh, uh, paraphernalia. So Doug, what, what are we, we looking first? at first here? What is this? Well, we've got uh, two sculpts for each hero. So right now you're seeing the uh, the barbarian. You can see that. Uh, and, yeah, and now there's like a male there. and a female in this version you get you get both it's important that you be able to play you know whatever you know whatever you want to play however you want to be okay yeah this is yeah. a game, so the a game for everyone male barbarian yeah yeah this is cool yeah, i always really love cool. the barbarian yeah and, and my favorite thing is i love that we put this figure on a pedestal so we got that rock in there and it really makes the stature of this figure really sing yeah, Absolutely. and look at his back muscles. Look at that. I mean, uh, just the, the delts are so developed. The, tra the trapezius muscles, uh, his triceps. I mean, this is uh, this is fantastic. Guy does a bunch of upright rows for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Pat, Pat, speaking of rocks, isn't that a dwarf? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a dwarf here. Again, uh, I, both, I love that the uh, axe male, is as big as him. <laughs> the female dwarf. The axe is the axe is as big as the dwarf. Yeah, as it should be. We have a lot yeah, of mini painters dwarf. on this stream, so I'm excited to paint that axe. Yep, I'm going to use yeah, him in my. Always, uh... A lot of people would argue that the dwarf was the best in the old Hero Quest. They, the people would always want to play the dwarf first, so this is a definitely a fan favorite. Absolutely, Next. definitely well rounded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here's our, our fighter mage, the elf, master of magic and uh, and sword. Wow, look at that sculpt. I think there's a lot of people out there that are gonna wanna use that miniature as their elf in, you know, other tabletop games. Uh, I, I think this is this is such a cool dynamic sculpt. Uh, you know, regal and uh, and uh, you know, really cool looking. Look at that cape. Speaking of the painters, they're gonna have a field day on that. Yeah, and those it's are also got a sweet too. like. Yeah, on that on the armor, there's a sweet like uh, owl motif that's like dropping down. Mm -hmm. That is just really cool. Next, cool. all right, yeah, hit that at... wizard. Boom. Wow, very cool. 
Yeah, I think a lot something of people are going to want to use these charm for their own personal them. characters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we tried to get that personality in there. <laughs> right? Like, I wouldn't trust this guy, though, would you? Absolutely. <laughs> totally. <What? laughs> I don't know. I don't trust him. <laughs> you need him, though. Oh, you got to trust the mage. Yeah. You, know? you got to trust the wizard to get you through. <laughs> yeah. It's true. I guess I'm just jealous. Yeah. Professional jealousy. They have nine spells, Very Pat. Good. Nine. Yeah. <laughs> so those are the basic. Or... Those are the basic heroes, and now we're getting into the bad guys. We got a little goblin with a meat cleaver. Um, <laughs> this is this is a really cool goblin sculpt. Sneaky, right? sneaky little uh, fella. You know, dangerous in numbers. Fast. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna he's a, he's gonna cut your Achilles tendon with that. Oh, and this one, this is a <laughs> this is a favorite of Hero Quest. Everybody remembers the the gargoyle, the very scary gargoyle from the first edition, but uh, this is the updated version. Um, Doug, you want to talk a little bit about the detail? Uh, he's dual wielding. Looks like he's got some stone. There's some uh, uh, remnants. Of, you, know, you can see that the wings are made out of stone, some kind of stone material. Yeah, I mean, I think like normally gargoyles you don't see using weapons. It's, it's kind of a hero quest thing. You know, it's not something you see like in, in the real world as much. So we wanted to definitely keep that. But you can see like we kind of just really put a different spin on his face. And we, we hope you really love it. Yeah. And once again, like this guy is benching at least 450. He's got <laughs> pec muscles. He's ripped. This is a big model. He puts the... Yeah, it puts the pin in the the bottom plate on the uh, on the pec deck over at front. Uh, <laughs> we're yeah, gonna have to add a jack. new. Yeah, we're, we'll add a new stat line. How much each character benches. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, what else do we One have? Make sure that we get through all of these. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what what this is, is this? This is a uh, this is a new addition. This is the abomination. So you know, for the abomination, we really wanted to keep that that aquatic feel to them, but you know, um, I would say that not all abominations will look exactly like this. You will see some variety in into this sinister uh, aquatic character. Yeah, yeah. No, I like it. Uh, this is interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see what the new quests entail uh, in which these abominations will appear. Very interesting. As a painter, I'm really right, excited to, to get paint on that. Yeah, uh, I can't wait to see uh, people start posting uh, the way that they're painting these up. Now, these are these are fantastic. Now, back in the day, uh, it was there were cardboard doors that you had to jam into these little plastic stands, and over time they would fray and kind of ride up. But uh, we've gotten rid of that problem. Let's talk about this a little bit, Doug. So yeah, we hope that you know it harkens back to that classic door, but we've we've added some elements that we we hope you're really gonna love. You can see that like uh, evil sorcerer keystone kind of you know gives it a, mm. hopefully a hero quest feel that you're really gonna really gonna enjoy. And the little details, I like the skull at the top, the vines growing up over the door frame. Uh, I love the detail. This is fan. These are fantastic sculpts. Uh, what do we have next? Some other some other hero quest fan favorites. I mean, uh, what do we have here? Hero Quest without furniture, right, Joe? That's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like one of the best parts of the mini dollhouse. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's what I think. And now what we've got here is we got the Sorcerer's Altar and the Tomb Sculpt. These are great. Yeah, so... I love these. Yeah, I think we hope we hope you love them. Um, in its current incarnation, that, that tomb lid comes off, so... Um, it's, it could be fun to, you know, put some things in there, uh, you know, if you're using it in other games or, you know, or just keeping it closed and, uh, you know, revealing the mystery of uh, what you might search for in the game of HeroQuest. Yeah. Or a new you trap. Stick your younger brother. You, you can put your younger brother in there. And, and, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's too small. But, might not fit. You know, you get the point. But these are great in the fact that, uh, you know, like I said before, when, we were young, when I was younger, they were made out of cardboard on the bottom. And uh, this is what's what's amazing is that these these pieces are going to be able to be used throughout any tabletop gaming, not even just specifically for the game. So once again, this is one of those uh, this is one of those um, 
you know, this is like a, a HasLab campaign uh, that people are going to want to sign up for to get the miniatures out of because they're such fantastic sculpts. Um, okay, well, uh, we've 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 taken up enough time because I'm, I'm getting super anxious, and I'm going to tell you why because right. we have a few more big things to announce. Um, there are Flesh some other these things you talk, I think we want to show. Yeah, we want to we want to show oh, some other of things here. We've got <laughs> this is this is this is the this is the Witch Lord. Yeah, it is. This this is you got so it. the NPCs are now getting the bosses are getting their own miniatures, which is incredible. So we've got uh, we've got the Witch Lord, which is this like evil demi witch. Very cool. Ready to challenge your party for the first time in in the uh, in the sculpt, I guess. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> All right. What also, speaking oh. of uh, unrepresented NPCs, we got Mentor here. Yep. This is great. I mean, I, <clears throat> I, I could see people wanting to play this as the wizard, you know, wanting yeah. to use that as their wizard, wizard miniature. Uh, I, I would allow it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, we've you're in luck because with the uh, exclusive uh, exclusive, we're including a card with the wizard stats with this image, so that you can actually play this character on the Hero Quest board. Fantastic! That's such a great mini. I love it. The cl like a classic wizard. That's great. What else? What else do we have? I think we're just about we got something else. I'm really excited for. <clears throat> we got something I'm really excited for. This is it. This is the one I'm really excited for. This is, this is no. the one. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's not. There's another one. I thought this was it, but it's not. This is, no, but this is, uh, this is a zombie. Yeah, the alt skull. That's correct. <laughs> yep, and it's not something anyone has yeah. seen yet. So this is, uh, you're seeing it first here at uh, PulseCon, and you can tell, like, you know, this zombie, again, HeroQuest zombies can use tools, and we wanted to keep that. It's part of, like, what HeroQuest has done in the past and what we want to do in the future. So this zombie is wielding uh, a machete and is ready to ready to do some damage in your game. Okay. Wow. Let's look at that. Very cool. Very scary. What else? That's it for miniatures. Think... Are you sure? Because I, I like to my understanding, I heard rumors about a bonus figure that is exclusive to this campaign that you're not going to be able to get anywhere else. Who is one of the most overlooked characters in Hero Quest lore? Okay, Adventure Two, you have to go and save a prisoner oh, who a Sir knight Ragnar. who had lost his way. <laughs> yes, there's Sir a Sir Ragnar, Ragnar yeah, gets his own up. miniature. <laughs> yeah, yeah flashed him up there. I didn't, we passed. He was we up there. By him too quickly. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get it back. Yeah, the, the, the PowerPoint is turned into a regular PowerPoint now through internet <laughs> technology. Jumped, okay. <laughs> I can't go backwards. All right, well, Patrick, <laughs> we're going to try to pull up. So I'll work on it. I'll work on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the like Ragnar miniature, everyone. Yeah, okay, here we go. Boom, boom. There's a door. What else? Well, we this isn't me. This oh, is yeah. superpowers. That's out of my Goblin. control. <laughs> well, look at this. Okay, we get the abomination. We get the door frame. Yep. Okay, and <laughs> there he is. There he is. Hold on. There he that, is. Yes, right. there That's he is. The Ragnar. Oh, Ragnar. Again, a man who can bench press Ragnar. a lot. <laughs> yeah, you might not. Have he looks pretty him. good for. He looks. He looks yeah. pretty pretty good for a hostage. You can tell he's got the muscle memory in there. Uh, but, uh, but I love this. I, I love that Sir Ragnar also can be useful. He can hold the torch so that your <laughs> barbarian doesn't have to let go of the two handed sword and put the torch in the other. This is, uh, he's useful <laughs> and he looks like he listens to the Grateful Dead. Uh, Most definitely. No, okay. <laughs> Maybe it's fish. But, Maybe uh, it's no, fish. <laughs> Maybe fish. Yeah, probably both. Um, probably this eats Ben and Jerry's. And lives in Vermont. No, he's uh, he looks super. This is such a cool miniature. I just I, I love this kind of gristled uh, warrior who's kind of you know he's seen a lot of life and and uh, uh, but but uh, but still you know got enough consciousness to lead the way with the torch. I, I love this character. Um, this is a really really fun one. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Patrick, for pulling that up. Thanks for going all the, the trouble to go back. <laughs> the the best. Power to be. We um, turned back time. But I want to get into 
I want to get into the fact that uh, people getting the mythic tier, you talk about the different tiers, people getting the mythic tier are going to get the Keller's Keep and Return of the Witch Lord expansions, which are going to add 37 miniatures to the collection and a combined 28 quests. So you're going to get, uh, you know, once you're done with the main quest book, you're going to be able to move into the other expansion quests. You're going to have all of these miniatures. Uh, so the fun can continue. Um, and uh, I want to talk about maybe the biggest unlock of all uh, for this campaign. Uh, we're going to bring on a special guest because after all, you can't talk about bringing Hero Quest back without bringing back the man who led its original design. So one of the available unlocks, which we may have hit already, uh, we'll have to ask the rest of the crew, uh, is an entirely new quest book <laughs> written and created by the legend Stephen Baker. And we're lucky enough to have him join us today with a taste of what adventures await. Uh, Stephen Baker, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Mentor's welcome is distracted. As you enter the study, the wizard glances at you, nodding slightly, then continues to stare deeply at the pages of the open book. It is Mentor's legendary artifact, the fabled Book of Prophecy, known as Law Tome. There is a brief silence. Finally, with a grim face, the wizard looks up, eyes still focused on some distant thought. Apologies, my friends. Closing the great book, Mentor walks around the oaken table to stand before you. I am troubled. The pages in Lawtone rarely reveal everything to me. The text and symbols always shift, shimmer, and move as future possibilities ripple with each passing moment. But not today. Today is different. The manuscript is like liquid. Words and symbols like formless ink that swirl slowly within the page. If I focus all of my power, they take shape for a single moment. There is but one word, one name, Velar. You will recall some time ago I summoned you to recover the talisman of law from the heart of Melar's maze. I thought it might shed some light on what Melar had embarked upon. I did not tell you then of my suspicions, that Melar was exploring with magic beyond his own, researching something, something dark. I had sought to meet, but Melar delayed my requests, then vanished before we could speak. The maze and tower above fell to ruin and were abandoned. There must be something else, something I have overlooked. Dread magic is at play here, for the pages of Law Tome have never before been so affected. I must explore this further. You, my friends, must return to Melar's maze. There you must explore all that remains of the library. Search the laboratory and explore the tower above on the cliffs of Turek Tor. I will guide you as best I can, but with the pages of Law Tome in turmoil, my help will be limited. When I can, I would use my far voice spell and speak with you directly at key points along your journey. Hurry, my trusted heroes, hurry, for without Law Tome's read into the future, the realm is in peril and the forces of Zargon move unseen. You heard him on the video, and here he is in person. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, <clears throat> you created my favorite board game growing up, which was a real gateway for me into tabletop role-playing game. Uh, I think that a lot of times people think that tabletop games are built for kids or, or, or teenagers of a certain age, but uh, Hero Quest was amazing because uh, it was a board game. It, it took away all the, the daunting tasks of, of dungeon mastering and you laid it out. You laid the tools out for all of tabletop gaming. Uh, what is it like coming back after your hiatus from the game 
Was it like riding a bicycle? It was, and uh, I just want to say thank you very much for having me here. Uh, it's great. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was really a sort of a funny feeling going back and creating a Hero Quest adventure after so many years. Um, but you know, it was it was so much fun. Uh, this was a game that I really enjoyed working on many many years ago. It's a game that uh, I've enjoyed playing over the years, uh, and it was a real honor to come back and create a new adventure. Excellent. We're all very happy to have you back, and I'm really excited to see what uh, what lies inside of the prophecy of Telor. I'm very excited. Uh, where did where did the original uh, idea for Hero Quest come from? So the the real sort of vision behind it. I was a role player as a kid, um, much like yourself, and you know when I uh, sort of joined Hasbro all those years ago. Uh, I just had the, the desire to basically put role-playing into a box. Um, I wanted to simulate the experience. I wanted to give people a taste for what role-playing is, uh, which is why you've got the board, the miniatures, you've got the sense of the adventures, you have uh, the dungeon master, but it's in a very light version. It's very accessible. This is a great way for someone to get into uh, adventure gaming as a hobby. Well, what was so amazing at that time when we played tabletop, it was, you know, here's a piece of graph paper and a lead pencil, and that was your board. So the idea that there were actual real doors for your characters to move through and miniatures and to fight against was really revolutionary. And you took the prep work out. You you did all the prep work for the Game Master, which which was really uh, just incredible. What What led you to do that? So I've always been a lifelong uh, miniature gaming, uh, miniature gamer. I love tabletop gaming. So I've always been painting miniatures, collecting soldiers, building terrain. Mm -hmm. I was always the guy who ran the games. I was always the game master. Uh, so I wanted to put everything in the box. I wanted to have miniatures. I wanted to have the furniture. I wanted to create the theater, the spectacle. I wanted to bring it to life. Mm -hmm. I love miniatures. I love miniature gaming. I love role playing and Hero Quest really put all of those passions in one place. Okay, I have a question for you that I'm sure a lot of the fans are wondering. What's the best character to play for a player? What's your so, well? Okay, what's your favorite character to play? So my favorite uh, was always the barbarian. Uh, I always enjoyed being a fighter in D and D, and so in Hero Quest, given the choice, I'll be the barbarian. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, what's what's the deadliest monster, or, or when you're running a game, when you're when you're when you're, what is what's the what's your favorite monster to put down onto the board against your players? So I think the monster for me that always gets a good reaction from the players is when you put one or two dread warriors in the room. They're the ones that always, you know. The players always sit back and go, "Okay, this this is going to be a this is going to be a battle." Fantastic, um, and I and I love the fact that we're coming back. You know, when I was when I was younger, I we had Keller's Keep and we had the Witch Lord expansions. But then I found out as an adult when I went back and started looking around on eBay that there were all of these other modules that were released, you know, around the world. Um, I love the fact that not only are we just starting off with you know, the three quest books that were originally offered in, you know, the original core kit and the two expansions. But I love the idea that this is really endless. If you sign up for this HasLab campaign, more adventures are going to keep rolling out and we're, there's going to be more and more content for people. Um, you know, are there plans maybe for, you know, licensed content like you know, uh, other, 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 you know, collaborations down the road. I mean, the, the sky's really the limit. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, <laughs> sky's the limit, Joe. I, I, we got to be careful. We're working on a lot. How about I say we're working on a lot of stuff. We're a very busy team. Yeah, we have a lot <laughs> of stories well, we want to probably... tell. This is maybe me rolling out my own carpet, but uh, I, 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 I am here today not only as the, the host of this panel, but to announce uh, that I am contributing to the project, that I am actually 
creating uh, a new quest book that comes with its own boss monster that uh, I'm I'm working on the design with uh, famed comic book artist Max Dunbar. And there will be a miniature sculpt for the mini boss uh, based on his work. And so um, you, uh, if you, if we get to 4 million, if we make it to 4 million, you will unlock my campaign as well. So I'm, I'm here to announce that uh, today as well, which I'm very excited about. As are we. We're excited too, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, do people out there, did they, do we, I guess we, you know, we've, uh, moved along as quickly as we could here, getting, getting you all the brand new, uh, news about this new, uh, amazing, uh, campaign, but I think we have a little time for Q and A. Do we have a time for a couple of questions? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> uh, this is a good, uh, question for the for the for the creative team will the rules and game mechanics be updated as well or is it exactly like the original any changes i think we are staying faithful to the original right now but keep your eye on on those stretch goals maybe you'll see some uh, deviations okay i know that in the previous incarnation there were other playable classes and we've we've already unlocked some of them. We unlocked the warlock. Uh, I imagine there will be more of those. Yeah, we have we have Just the warlock that... unlocked. Pe people don't know too much about that warlock. Um, I might be able to maybe give you a little glint into what you can expect from the warlock if you think people would be interested in it. Please, Doug. Well, I all right. I I, I I think they definitely would. Um... <laughs> Uh, so we're still play you... testing it, but uh, right now we're kind of, you know, if you're thinking of a bio, you might say, you are the warlock, a magical artillerist who has bonded with a sinister creature, allowing you to assume its winged form. Let your allies protect you while you deal damage from afar. Did you say afar? Uh, there might Ooh. be some range in there. Range fighter. Okay. I love it. Um, uh, Arya or Anya Wolf asks, where can we learn how to play Hero Quest? Well, yeah, you could learn you how to sign play. up for the campaign. It's pretty, it's pretty, sign up for yeah, the like campaign. Saying, you know, there's a lot of great, great playing, videos out there too. Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. There are. Yeah, there are groups that actually plays through some of the original core adventures that you can watch on YouTube uh, to, you know, to watch. But but uh, like we were saying before with, with Steven, you know, Steven was a huge fan of, of tabletop gaming. And the idea of dungeon mastering and prepping for an adventure takes time. This is something that you can, it's all in the box. You open the box, you're the game master, you jump in, you run the game for your friends. It's, it's all right there and it is made so simple, but there is, it, the rules are made so simple, but the, the fun is not decreased. The fun is, it's still the same fun level. It's just, you can pick it up and play it without any sort of prep. I mean, Steven, I'm taking words out of your mouth, but uh, am I in the ballpark? Yeah, yeah I don't think anybody, it's, uh... perfect. Go ahead, All Steven. right, excellent. Well, it's, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's a, it's, a, it's yeah. a relatively simple game to get into, uh, and as Joe says, everything's there. The, uh, you you can you can be the dungeon master. Uh, you just open up a quest and you follow the the instructions on the sheet and lay out the dungeon as the adventure unfolds. Yeah, I mean, if you love D and D, you'll love Hero Quest. I mean, if if you don't have time for a full campaign. I mean, play Hero Quest. The other side of it is once you start rolling, it's so addictive. It's so fun. You'll whip through those modules. You'll want another one. You'll want another one. And the beauty of this campaign and uh, and the stretch goals is the fact that you can, if there is the demand, we'll keep unlocking those stretch goals and those modules. You're going to get Steven's brand new module. You're going to get my module. You're going to get the original expansion modules and the core module. Uh, so sign up. There's going to be more miniatures that'll be available, more quests and adventures and furniture. It's uh, this is truly just uh, you know, it it warms my heart to know that my favorite board game is making a comeback, and uh, what a great time uh, for it to come back. 
uh, Tabletop has taken over the world, and uh, it's time for Hero Quest to, to be placed back on top. So um, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you to everyone who watched. Thank you. Sign up thank you. for the Hero Quest HasLab campaign at uh, check it out at uh, at uh, are we at Pulse HasbroPulse.com? HasbroPulse.com. That's right, Joe. HasbroPulse.com. Sign up, and uh, we will see you soon. Thanks.